Hi everybody and welcome to CADprof.com. This is lesson 9 of a 10 part series, CAD for Landscape. I've downloaded the PDF file that comes with this particular lesson and it identifies the different type of references we're going to be using. So we're going to be drawing each one of the different references as per the information that's identified on this page. If you're working for an office, they may already have this as blocks that you simply copy and paste or you'd insert into your diagram and then fill out the necessary information. We're also going to be creating a new layer called Notes and we're going to be referencing L1, L2, and L3. So make sure all of this printed material is handy for today's lesson. Let me close this down and I'm going to open up AutoCAD and I'm going to be opening up L1 from lesson number eight. And as this boots up, I will stretch out the window so it maxes the area that's available. There we go. And let's open that up. So file open. And there's lesson eight, L1. Open that up. And we're ready to begin. Now I'm going to switch tabs. Where we left off last day was on L2. So I'm going to switch to the L1 tab. And we're going to be drawing in the area to the right of the screen. So even though we're not working on the page itself, we'll be copying and pasting and moving that information over later. Now all the notations that we're going to be creating today are actually placed on the paper, in paper space. They do not exist in model space. That way we can copy and paste all the different elements to each of the pages without worrying about the drawing scale. So I'm going to be creating a new layer call this notes and leave it as white make it current close this down and we're ready to begin so we're using the dimensions that are prepared on lesson 9 PDF file so I'll start with a circle center diameter the diameter there is half an inch or 0.5 and then I'm going to draw a horizontal line from that. That line will be extended as required. We pick that up from the quadrant. So shift right mouse key for the temporary snap override to find the quadrant. And we can click on the quadrant. I want a nice horizontal line. So if you haven't got it on, just press F8. That gives me a nice horizontal line. And the length of this line will change based on how much text space we need. So now we're ready to add the text. In the annotations menu in the ribbon, we're going to click on the arrow that points below the word text. We're going to select the single line text because we have multiple different sizes that we're going to be working with. And you can see it wants to snap to the center of the circle or an endpoint. So in the drawing aids, I'm going to remove the snap setting. So now it's set to none and therefore I can easily or freely place the text where I want to. And I want to click right here. It's asking me to specify the height. The height of this text is 530 seconds. So 5 forward slash 32, no inch sign is required. Rotation is 0. And we're going to put in a value of 1. And then click off the text. So click on anywhere on the gray area of your screen. And it's looking to apply more text. So now I'm going to click below the number 1 and type in capital L1. And I'm going to click off my screen and then press Enter. And that ends the command. So I'm going to move these into position where I'd like to see them. And in this particular case, the first example, we're more or less eyeballing the location. Now, you're rarely ever going to hear me say that, but I need to do that in this case. Later on, what we're going to be doing when we copy and paste this, we edit the text so then it appears in the same location for every reference bubble. So I have the page number as well as the drawing number created. Now I'm ready to put in the information about what we're referencing here, what title. So I'm going to go back into single line text and I'll click on the location approximately here. It's asking me for this height and it's an eighth of an inch. Rotation again is zero and now we'll type in plan. This will be all capitalized and I'll press enter twice to exit the command. Now I'm going to select the single line once again and click underneath the word plan and the height of this text is 330 seconds. Rotation 0 and then we'll type in the word scale. 
semicolon, space, one half inch, space equals space, one foot zero inches, and then press enter twice. So at this point, we could reposition the lettering if we're not happy with it. I'm pretty happy with what I have here. This line is a bit long for what I have in terms of the text. So you'll notice if I click on the end of the line and move it in and click again, it will shorten the length of that particular line. Works great. And that's what I want to use for my title references. Okay, now we're going to create the actual sectional reference using similar techniques. So in the circle, the diameter here is a quarter inch. So circle, center diameter. Click on your screen, type in 0.25, enter. There's my circle. As I mentioned earlier, this may be slightly small for larger scale pages, but for 8.5 by 11, this seems to work well. If we're going into 11 by 17, 24 by 36, you may want to change that quarter inch diameter uh, to approximately 3 eighths of an inch, and that seems to be a better size. But for now, this is what we're going to be using. Now we have this triangular shape that's above it. So that identifies the direction of our section. And the way we draw that is we use the rectangle command. And I'm going to draw a rectangle and then move it to its right position. So I'll click anywhere on the screen and type in 0.25 comma 0.25. And there's my rectangle. Now I've got to position that over top of the circle, center to center. So as you remember, if I click on the rectangle, it only has endpoints and midpoints. It doesn't have a center point. But I can still find the middle of this rectangle in order to move it over the center of the circle by using one of the other commands. So I'm going to go up into Modify Menu, click on Move, click on the rectangle, press Enter. It's asked me to specify a base point, so Shift, right mouse key. And here is mid between two points. Now what I want to do is pick the opposite points. It's not allowing me to snap because I have my snap off. So I'm just going to go down into my drawing aids, turn my snap back on, and there's the one corner and the other. And now I've got it nicely laid out onto the middle of that square. I want to find the center of the circle. As soon as I move my mouse over top of the edge, it identifies where the center is, and I click on that. And now I want to rotate my rectangle, so I click on Rotate, click on the rectangle, press Enter. I need to find the base point of the rotation, and notice it's not highlighting the circle until I go over the edge of the circle. Now I see the center of the circle, and I click. And now I can type in my rotational angle, and in this case it's 45 degrees. And there is our shape. I will now create the horizontal line that extends from it, so I click on Line pick up the corner, and in this case, uh, I will press F8 to get a nice horizontal line. I'll click and press Enter. Now at this point, I only show one of these sectional lines with the arrow pointing up. You could duplicate this and then make two of them, but we're just going to use one, and then we can always copy, rotate, do whatever we want with it to point in the right direction. But before I do that, I need to trim the bottom of this rectangle to the line. So I select the trim click on the line, press enter, then select the bottom half of that rectangle, and there is our shape. Great, let's add some text to this. Go into text, single line. Again, it's trying to snap, so I want to remove my drawing aid for snap. I'll click inside, and the actual size of the text there for the drawing number is 330 seconds. Don't want to rotate it, so zero is fine. And the value here is number one click below because it's the same size and here I'll put in capital L2. I'll press enter twice and now I'll move them in place. If I click on the one, I want to click off the screen and not be near anything that has an endpoint or a snap position if my drawing aids is on. This time it's not, so this allows me to quickly move it. It's snapping up or down because my F8 is on, so I'll press F8, so that gives me free movement. And then I'll do the same with L2. I just press Enter in order to reinitiate the Move command. Now I'll move L2. And I've got the text where I want it. I can adjust it a bit more. Sometimes we have to zoom in to get it looking just the way we want to. And now 
I'm just going to move it off the line work so it doesn't bleed into the lines. There's my sectional reference and I don't need any text in this one. And then the third one we have is our detail reference. It also uses a quarter inch diameter circle and text so I can easily copy what I already have. My two pieces of text as well as my circle. So I'm going to use that and copy that. And now it needs a reference arrow. So I'm going to go into my leaders and click an arrow position and guesstimate to approximately where it should be. When I use leader, remember it always wants to add text. So at this point, before I've included any text, I press escape. Now this leader allows us to adjust its length, but notice the landing does not change. So what options do I have with that? One of the options I do have is to use a command called explode. So if I type it in EXPLODE and I select this element and I press enter, now it allows me to adjust this landing to any length I want. If I press F8, get a nice horizontal line and then I can move my circle reference and I want to move it from its quadrant down to the end of that line and I'm just using shift right mouse key each time in order to select the object snap settings I want. This does have text it's a sixteenth of an inch so once again we'll go into text single line click approximately where I want it type in 1 over 16 for the height rotation 0 and here we'll type in C detail and then press enter twice so if I want to be particular I can move this a bit closer to be in line with the text that's to the right of it and I'm constantly pressing F8 on and off to make sure things are going horizontally vertically or if I need to move them diagonally I press F8 once again to remove it. So I have my detail reference, I have my title reference as well as my sectional reference but the sectional reference is missing some information we need to actually fill in these shapes to have a solid color so we're going to be filling that in with a hatch this is a command we're going to be exploring in more detail in Lesson 10, but for now we're going to go up into the Draw menu and there's a symbol to the bottom right of that menu that looks like a hatched area. That would make sense. I'm going to click on the word hatch and I get this menu, this ribbon. And the one we want to select is solid. Now that one's selected we have different things that we can do. We can either pick objects or points. I want you to click on pick point and now as we approach the triangular shapes you'll notice that they fill in and then what we need to do is click. Go to the next one, click. Once you've done all three, press enter. And now we have the correct symbols for our references. The last thing I want to draw is this little box. Now we're going to draw a small one and we can later on rescale it as we require for each of the different locations where we need to reference the detail. So while I'm still in notes, I'm clicking on the rectangle tool and I want to pick up the end of that arrow. My object snap is off, so I've turned it on in my drawing aids. Click on rectangle again. And now I'm going to pick up the end of that arrow and make a rectangle. It doesn't matter which size we're going to actually make it because we're going to adjust it as we require for each drawing. Now I'm going to click on that box and it change its properties. I want to change the color to number nine. The properties menu here overrides anything that we've selected in the layers menu. In the layers menu, notes is a white color chip and therefore it draws it in white. Now again, it gets confusing with white and black. They're the same. So if I'm on a white piece of paper, it appears as black. If I'm on a colored piece of paper of any sort, it'll appear as white. So these two are actually the same color. I want to change the color chip to number nine. It's a very light color. Sometimes that's too light and you have to go back to eight, but we're going to leave it at nine. So this overrides the settings that are in the layers menu. The properties menu is something that we use when we have unique situations 
where we need to have multiple colors in the same layer. Also, we're going to use that in order to add line types. So I've clicked on by layer where it shows the line type and I'm going to click on hidden and now that will be a hidden property. We don't see that as a hidden line. We're going to have to adjust the scale. So type in LT scale and it was at 12. We needed that to see it in model space, but in paper space it's always related to paper. So we'll type in 0.5 and now you can see the hidden lines for paper space. So now we have all the symbols. We're ready to copy and paste them in all the pages. I'm rolling my mouse to zoom outwards. I'm going to select edit, copy with base point. It's not a copy and paste command as we normally use because we're not copying it to the same drawing. We're copying it to multiple pages. So copy with base point. I can pick any point on the screen because it doesn't matter. And then I'm going to select by using crossing everything that's on my page. Press enter. And now I'm going to move to the L2 tab and click on edit, paste. Don't paste it as blocks because then it becomes a single entity. I simply want to paste it. And I'll click it in the same location, more or less. It doesn't matter as long as it's in the gray area. So let's go back to L1. We hadn't completed this drawing in its entirety. We're going to go back to model space, zoom out. And we have to actually draw the plan view that's above first. So we'll use the information we already have above there. So we're flipping our PDF file to L1 and I'm going to draw the different elements here. One of the ways to switch layers is to click on an object and then make that current. If I use that icon, the cap layer is now current. I'll draw some line work above it. I'll press F8 to get my nice vertical lines and then I will copy and paste that. So I'm using the cap line and the different base points to place construction lines. These are temporary and from here I can make my rectangle so that they're lined up nicely with what's below. So I'm going to click on rectangle and in this case shift right mouse key use the nearest option so that will pick anywhere along that line. It doesn't matter where it's going to be. I simply want to pick a point along that line and this rectangle is one foot one square so one foot one comma one foot one and enter there's my rectangle it shows that it has a peak at the top so I'll draw across the two now even though F8 is on it still allows me to draw diagonal lines but I just got to make sure that my object snap setting is correct and from there I'm going to copy the cap from this base point to that destination point so everything lines up nicely perfect I don't need these construction lines so I just did a crossing select delete now I'm ready to draw the fence switch layers at this time to the fence click on the line tool go from one point to another and offset that one unit that's the thickness of the top rail now it's not positioned here I just use that as a guide to give me some nice straight lines it's four inches from the top Okay, so I'll move those two lines and my selection, click anywhere, then type in 0, comma, minus 4, and there is my 4 inch. So this rail doesn't actually appear in the center or is not positioned in the center of the column. It's slightly recessed. Let's add our dimensions. I'm going to add my DIM24 dimensions to this. So I'm in that layer. I'm going to switch my annotation. This is DIM2. That was the last set of dimensions we did. I'll switch that to DIM24. So now instead of going into the modify dimension style, I just click on the scroll down menu at DIM2 and now I can select DIM4 and dimension my linear dimensions. There's my 8 inch. Select continue. There's my 1 and there's my 4. Press enter. I'm going to correct the one later and then I'm going to go into dimension, baseline, type in S and enter, click on the first line of the 8 inch and go to the cap, there's my 1 foot 1, press enter and I have a series of dimensions here I never put in so linear, edges of the cap, move up, now notice it's interfering a bit, that's okay, we'll move that later on and now it's continuous, so dimension, 
continuous. And this one will show not only the cap, but the overhang, the width of the column, and the overhang. Good. Let's move the rectangle and its dimensions slightly higher. Verify that the dimensions are correct. They are. The 1 and the 4 are challenging here because you won't be able to see them in print. So what I can do is either move the 4 out of the way entirely or move the 1 over to one direction or another. I'm going to try to move the 1 and see if that improves. And that's not too bad. I can move the 8 over a bit more. It's understandable what these dimensions refer to. Okay, that's fine. And I think I have everything that I need. Now, as I mentioned, I don't put the reference information here. I put it in the actual title block. So let's go to L1. See what's happened. It's cut the window off. Okay. So I need to go into my viewport. Turn that on. This viewport needs to be larger. So I'm going to max out its size. And I'll double click inside the window. And I'll scroll down. Now, for me to get the top of that to display. It's cutting some of the bottom dimensions out. Again, not a problem. Go back into model space. And in here, I can move all this. What methods can I use? Well, one of the best ways is stretch. So let's go into stretch command. And I'm putting a crossing over the extension lines. Don't worry about the numbers, just the extension lines. And my selection, click and move. Now go back to L1. Everything fits perfectly. Great. I'm going to turn off my viewport. So double click outside the viewport window first and then turn off the viewport layer just so it's not on. Now I can move all my different notations to where they belong. First thing I'm going to move is my sectional reference. I'm picking it up anywhere. It doesn't matter. F8's on. That's why it's going horizontally and I'm rotating my mouse. Now this location is very important because of what the actual section looks like. I'm going to click it right here so it runs more or less right through the center of that cap. Now the extension line here is too long so I'm going to click on that and I want to bring it right to the top of the cap so it's easier read. Now why is it here? I don't want to cut through the gate. I want to cut in front of the gate. That's why we've positioned it here. The arrow points in the direction of the actual section. So we're cutting it along the center of the cap looking towards the gate. This information refers to where that detail is. It's going to be the first drawing on L2. Let's go to L2. There's the first drawing on L2. We haven't put any of that information in. We will, but this is the L2 page. Notice how we're cutting through the cap right through the middle. That's why I see the full peak. But I'm not cutting through any of the fence or the gate because the fence and the gate is set behind. So the references are very important. Where we place them is just as critical. That's why it has to go here. If that fence was forward and I put my section line here, I would not be able to see it. That's why it is in the location that it is. Okay, so let's move our title bubbles. So I'm going to move this title bubble over to this location. Drawing's a bit tight, but that's okay. And now I need a second one down at the bottom here. One of the things I like to do is line up as often as I can any of my references. So I'm going to copy this reference from the top. And notice again without F8, I can go anywhere. I'm going to press F8 and bring it neatly down into this little space. Click Enter. Now I have to change the information. So this is the second drawing on L1. And it's not a plan view. It's an elevation. The scale is the same. So I've clicked on it. I changed the text. Click off of it. And it's already positioned nicely. So you can see why we filled out all the information to begin with. Because then it's easier to edit. So how did I edit it? I double clicked on the text. It's already highlighted, ready for me to add new text. It's already the right size. I don't have to do anything. I don't have to make any of those modifications. So once we have one of these symbols located on our drawing somewhere, copy, paste, and edit. Quickest method. 
That way also everything lines up where this text starts is exactly where this one does. Where the word scale is is exactly where that one is. And in this case, because scale is the same, we've saved ourselves some time in actually writing text. Now we're ready to add the different notations. Okay, So we're going to be using leader. I like to zoom in on my drawing so I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to click on leader. It's identifying the finial. I click on the top of the finial and I move outwards. Look what it's doing. That's because I'm in the dim layer. So what happened here? Remember we moved and copied. That doesn't change the property of the layer that it's in. This is in the notes layer. So even though in the layers menu it says dim 24 because we're modifying it, it ignores the layer that you're in. Now that I'm adding new text, I gotta make sure I'm in the right layer, in this case notes. So let's add a leader. Click on the finial. Move off. Now it's going straight across because F8's on. I'm going to take F8 off. And here is the word finial. And I click off. This is extremely large. So let's resize this to 3 seconds of an inch. In annotations, where we have the symbol that looks like a leader, we're going to have to change the properties of that. So click on the little symbol. We start with standard. We're going to select new. We start with copy of a standard and we're going to call these notes. Select continue. Now here's where we make all of our adjustments. Text height right away it goes to that one first. We're going to change that to 330 seconds. And again this is something that probably be already organized in your office. We're not going to change anything here. I want to be able to use the standard text information that it's using right now. Keep the text horizontal. The color is going to be by block, so it's in the notes layer. That's why it's um, showing the way it is. The left and right attachment, I want middle top. So this is the top line, and it's pulling this line from the middle. Now, why do we have left and right? Because if I point to the right as my first point and add text to the left, I want it in the middle of the text, but it's to the right side of the text. If I have it text in the opposite direction, it'll be the middle of that point as well. I don't want a large gap that's here, so I'm going to change this to a sixteenth. So it reduces the gap here. And I'm going to click on leader format. Straight, that's fine. That just simply identifies that uh, how we're going to be drawing the different leader line. Leave the color line weight as is. Arrowhead, I want this closed fill arrowhead, but it's a bit big. So let's change that to a sixteenth. The break size, we're not going to really be using that, but we'll change that to a sixteenth as well. Leader structure, maximum leader points is two. So there's my first click, there's my second click. That's what it's referring to. Don't worry about these, we're going to leave them because we're manually placing them. Automatically include landing. This is the landing, the horizontal portion, but I don't want it that big. Let's change that to a sixteenth. So after each one I'm pressing enter. So I've got a shorter landing. That tends to look a bit cleaner and neater. Annotation, we're going to leave this as is to specify a scale. We pick the scale one to one because it's on the paper. And there's my content, there's my text, everything else is good. Select OK. And now we have an annotation style for notes. OK, and close this up. So under annotation, it says notes. Let's see what the difference is. So I'm going to click on leader and I'll pick any point on the screen, doesn't matter. And then type finials as well. And you see all the adjustments we made. I'm going to remove the larger one that we originally created just by clicking on and deleting it. These leaders we can adjust at any time. I'm going to click on the actual leader, click on the arrowhead, point it onto the finial, click on the base of the landing and move it up to where I want it and it looks great. So we're trying to duplicate everything that we have on the L1 drawing. When I'm clicking the landing, remember I'm trying to line up with that one, I could actually draw a nice vertical line and click to it using nearest. Why don't I do that? It's just to show you how we can actually make a professional looking drawing. This is the top rail. And to have some consistency, it'll look really neat. I'm going to select line Pick that first landing spot, F8, scroll down. Now I'm going to move this second one that I did just by clicking on the
the actual leader and then just moving it to that point. If I want to make sure the rest of my line work lines up, I'm going to switch my object snap settings to include the word nearest. Now, you rarely use this, but this is a perfect case for it. So anywhere I come near that line, it's going to snap to that. That's what I want to have on at all times. Okay, so let's add some more leaders to this. The next one is a one inch by one inch mid rail. And notice it's picking up anywhere along that line. That's what I wanted to see. I'm just taking off my F8 just to click anywhere along that line. And I'll type in one inch by one inch mid rail. And then I will click off that and I can continue doing all my text. So what other information do you need? This is beautiful that I have nearest on because now I can click anywhere along the picket even though there's no intersection. I want to also make sure that I don't interfere with text. So whenever I'm placing my leaders, my landings, and the actual text, I want to make sure none of it will actually interfere with text information that I already have. Now notice the text that we have here is stacking and it's not full size. We'll change that in a minute. So I want to change the size of the actual fractions here. To make any edits with what you've already placed in your annotation, just click on the annotation. If I double click inside of it, I now get a text box that I can edit. If I click on the actual fraction, I can now adjust how it looks. So this little symbol, this gold shaped S, if I click on that, I can now adjust how my fractions are visible. I'm going to unstack that. That's the way I want it to look. So I'll do the same on the second one. And now just click off your work. Now if I've already got something written out, I can copy paste and edit it. So I've got a base rail here. So I'm going to copy my top rail from this intersection to any point nearest along that line. I'm going to pick a point here. Press escape double click the text and here I'm going to type in base and I'm going to adjust where it's selecting the actual end of the arrow to the base and then I scroll back out and that's how we'll be adding the text to this particular problem anytime you run interference with the dimension line you have to change it if you click on the guideline and delete it you'll see how nicely the text is lining up Complete the rest of the drawing on your own. Since the drawing is to scale, you can actually measure out the title block information where it's labeled L1, date, scale, name of the project. Thank you for joining me today. I'm sure with much practice, you'll find how simple and easy it is to use leaders and to do annotations for your drawings. I look forward to seeing you next day.